Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Myself ID. Today I am going to tell you about capacity planning calculation. So friends, in my previous video, I described you about the capacity planning. What is the capacity planning? What was the definition, definition for capacity planning, which I described you in my previous video. How we are doing capacity planning? What are the types of capacity planning, which is already discussed with you in my previous video? So if you are watching this video and you haven't seen my previous video or to see the definition, to see the uh, see some input about capacity planning, please watch my video uh, that is capacity planning sequence one to understand the basic of capacity planning. Okay. So today I am going to tell you about the method of calculation capacity planning that is type one. We can say that is manual calculation. Okay. So keep watching my videos. Learn step by step type one capacity planning which is manual calculation. So friends, in short, I am again telling you what is capacity planning. So capacity planning is a process by which we plan staffing to handle the volume by some specific assumptions to meet all the client metrics. In short, we can see we actually plan how many headcounts are required to handle the volume by considering some important calculation inputs. Okay, so friends, if you are watching this and you haven't seen my video regarding difference between headcount and FT, so please pause then first, then you can see this video because you have come to know about FT and headcount difference. In because uh, a capacity planning is a act by which we actually plan how many headcounts are required against the FT. So next question will definitely click also in your mind. Then what is the difference between headcount and FT? Because we plan the headcount against the FT. That is a concept behind of capacity planning. Okay. So today I am telling you about the calculation method that is manual calculation. There are two types of calculation in capacity planning. First is manual calculation basis on workload calculation, and another is Erlang the Erlang calculation this matlab, uh, means say that first is manual planning basis on workload calculation. Another is Erlang Erlang calculation basis on Erlang calculation. Okay. So friends, you will learn about the type one calculation that is manual planning basis on workload calculation we can also say uh, this like workload calculation okay so what are the important topics what are the important uh, in points which should be considered while planning for cap capacity plan okay so in short we can also say it at cap plan in if you are facing an interview and interviewer is asking to about about the cap plan what is cap plan don't be confused just answer the about the capacity planning okay so what are the important components which are being considered while doing manual planning is mentioned here like first we have to be ready with the forecast volume forecast numbers or volume okay Friends, I would request you uh, before it if you are my new viewer and you have not subscribed my channel, so please subscribe my channel and also don't forget to press bell icon to get more videos, more updates. Okay, my YouTube channel is WFM and more YID. 
in this channel by this channel i started to tell you in very easy way what is about wfm what is about reporting what is about mis and some more topics and formulas has been cleared by uh, which are being considered which are being using in excel okay so please keep watching this and if if you have any suggestions to share with me if you have any input to share with me then please mention that in comment box or you can directly email us by my mail id that is mr.ishwarsharma at the rate gmail.com which is already mentioned in my youtube channel okay so we should be ready with focus volume numbers okay so first component is focus number another second is average handling time in short ast so what is average handling time then next working days in a week how many working days are being considered while capacity planning and then working hours how many working hours that needs to be paid uh, by one head count in a day then occupancy shrinkage attrition and so on some more points can be added here but i'm just telling about the basic points to calculate and understanding the knowledge about the capacity planning if you want to more to learn about shrinkage attrition occupancy average handling time you can watch other videos by my channel go to video list and you can see all the videos related to there so friends moving on here i have mentioned a table that is that has already uh, mentioned here like uh, the all inputs which are being considered while calculation okay so it will save your time uh, so first i am mentioning here what is the volume for that volume is we are taking here 10000 volume okay then ast i am um, taking here the ast for 300 seconds which means to say 5 minutes for call okay so now the working days in a week okay working days per week so work days uh, it varies according to process to process or business to business or company to company okay in some companies it is six days working in some companies it is five days working okay so i am taking here five days working culture and required head count so required head count sorry required hours per day to so required hours per day in some companies it is being taking 9 hours staffing and some companies it's taking 9.5 hours so i'm considering here 9 hours okay so friends i would like to tell you it, this method is also called like linear method for capacity planning and it is also being used for boys non boys both process okay so keep watching moving on uh, now we will calculate uh, working hours in a week so working hours we have to calculate so what will be the working hours working hours will be this into this this will be the working hours 45 hours of working required for a week okay now we required uh, the break time or we can say off time in break time you can say off time so we are taking here the lunch break we can say 0.5 hour because and we uh, break one plus one we are taking here 0.5 hour okay now moving on coaching meeting or any representation session uh, if it is being uh, taken uh, ordered by or permission by client or we can say it is in according to the bill amount then we can say 0.5 hours uh, per week or we can also put it zero hours okay now we are calculating this uh, uh, 
uh, in a big lunch break would be uh, mentioning just I'm just freezing it the cell fit into uh, lunch chart. okay now copying down the cell formula same so friend you can see here the 2.5 hour would be lunch break and 2.5 hour will be tea break in some companies two times of tea break is given or we can say one hour per day is uh, given by every company for the break time or off time but they manage in their way as per the requirement of process or business okay. so i have mentioned here the 0.5 hour for 0.5 hours into five days would be the 2.5 days and 2.5 point and two again 2.5 will be called five hours five hours now we will take the production hours how many production hours for the week is required so we will just uh, calculate it through the working hours in a week minus total deductions of break time or time or any repressor time which is paid this minus sorry this minus okay just wait this minus okay sorry this minus lunch break time and tea break time and refresher or coaching time okay now the result it results out 40 hours per week okay now we are calculating workload so what is workload workload is a calculation of call into ast or we can say volume into ast okay so this method is also uh, known as workload calculation method for capacity planning like we are calculating the workload to call into ast but now you can see this uh, results like uh, the in seconds so because we are taking the calculation in hours here then we have to convert it into hours only so I'm just converting it in R as this divided by seconds uh, in a R. So you know the 3600 of seconds are uh, in a R. So we are just dividing it. It will results like 833.33 hours. That will be the bulk load for a week. Okay. Now moving on. Now we are taking the required headcount that we can also say that this this will be the net required hour, hours sorry net required headcount. So now the workload workload is here workload divided by required production hours per week divided by 40 hours. So now you can see here it is 20.83. Okay, while dividing workload by production hours required production hours is results like 21 ft that is the net ft or we can say this is net ft basis on 100 percent but you know uh, nobody can work on 100 percent so we have to take here the numbers for occupancy uh, you can consider here as per the input received from the operation leader or your leaders or your process or it will also a calculate it will also input uh, that is agreed by your client and your business uh, process manager like we can say just calculating the uh, uh, ft after net ft so this will be the if i am taking the occupancy of 80 percent now dividing by 80 percent so now ft is moving 26 fts are required you can see here the before the calculation of occupancy it was 21 around and now it is 26 around so 26 fts are required here okay you can see 26 at count are required here so this is still not a gross amount of head counts okay so what will be the head count after including the shrinkage now what are the inputs for shrinkage has been Taken that will again depends on your process manager input or your uh, business input you can consider but calculation which is most important to understand 
how we are calculating the head count by including the string case. Okay, so now understand keep watching head count divided by bracket open one minus uh shrink is amount shrink is amount is 18 percent of shrink is here we are considering it is not an standard it is it depends business to business or it depends on the holidays or leave what are being given to an employee by an organization or process so it depends so now you can see the 32 head count approx 32 head counts is required we can also say that gross head count this is now gross head count so gross head count what is gross head count Sorry. gross head count is required 32 so 32 head counts are required to handle 10000 of volume on basis of 300 of ASD for five days business culture okay so friends this was the calculation method basis on manual manual calculation for capacity planning and i hope you have enjoyed and understand this calculation method if still you have any doubts or anything you can access me or you further understanding further learning further planning you can access me through the comment box or you can access me through the mail id which i already asked you my mail id okay so keep enjoying this video and keep watching some more points can be added here as an input for occupants uh, so for the calculation of capacity planning which can be considered here uh, which will i discuss to you in later method okay because it is a fresh calculation if you are already running a business or process and if you are adding some more volumes so how many headcounts you will require by considering the current active headcounts or current active situations so it depends on the situation it depends on the calculation method so how months for how months we are planning for how we are planning so keep watching and keep seeing my videos thank you Thank you. We'll meet again in next video. Thank you.